we don't have to settle for where we're at. So going back to the law of attraction, here we go again, you know, the only thing that's keeping us from manifesting what we want out there is ourself. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. our, uh, if you believe in grace, which I do, and I believe that grace is flowing to us all the time. The problem is we are not the best receivers you know, mm -hmm. um, and, and the thing that keeps us separate from our divinity is the same thing that keeps us separate from the things that we want in the world, because it really is about our, our emotions and our thoughts and our, and our deep seated beliefs that are all creating uh, vibrations of their own. So one of the, what if you were the living embodiment of all pervasive peace? What if all sentient beings all around you increase their vibration towards harmony by merely being in your contact what if through conscious reasoning focused will and intentional living you reform yourself thereby becoming a catalyst in sparking transformation in others i'm shilpa lewis meditation mindset and mindfulness coach for midlife mompreneurs, and you are listening to Omnipresent Awareness, the podcast that will inspire you to use your story to serve humanity in not just healing, but thriving as souls, each fulfilling their highest purpose. Namaste. Thanks for tuning in to Omnipresent Awareness. This is your host, Shilpa Lewis, and welcome back. Okay, so I'm running a little challenge as I'm trying to get more people to discover this podcast and the conversations that inspire those who value personal growth. And the best way to do that is to leave reviews. You can leave a review on Spotify, Google Podcast, or Apple Podcast. So here is a little request from me to you. If you feel like you have received any value at all from these episodes, then please write a little review and take a screenshot of your review. Once you've done that, email that screenshot to me at omnimindfulness at gmail.com. Once I get your screenshot, you will receive one of my infographics. Spark your meditation practice through Sankalpa. Sankalpa is the Sanskrit word for intention setting. Along with this, you will receive a link to my guided meditation where you can daily practice intention setting with some inspirational music and breath work. This infographic, along with the guided meditation, is guaranteed to have you start your practice for meditation with a spark. It is my gift for you for being a listener, being a supporter, and of course, for you to be able to manifest the best meditation practice. So thank you for showing up, listening, and being inspired, and most importantly, taking action. I appreciate you. So again, please don't forget to take a screenshot of your review and send it to omnimindfulness at gmail.com and I will send you that infographic and the link to the guided meditation. We are now in the season of Seeds of Abundance, which is our third podcast season honoring spring, new mindsets, and abundance. The season will cover mindful money mindset movement and healing, law of attraction, and embracing the feminine energy. And next up, Carla Sridevi Cohen. Carla is an expert in emotional intelligence and a master healer, a best-selling author and winner of the Exceptional Global Woman Award in 2020. Carla is certified in 25 plus healing modalities and has synthesized her studies with shaman and healers to create a bridge between the metaphysical with science for amazingly consistent and rapid results with her clients. Her background includes technical and shamanic studies of the human body and energy systems. She blends her in-depth studies of the energetic, emotional, and physical 
bodies to help clients break through stuckness, confusion, anxiety, and pain so that they can get clear on their path and increase their abundance. She is a clericent who offers group and individual services for healing. She especially enjoys identifying and releasing trapped emotions and brain profiling for her clients. In her spare time, Carla helps Embracing the World, a global humanitarian organization dedicated to alleviating world suffering. She also enjoys playing the harmonium and singing. Most recently, she became the director of Global Women Club of Orange County in California. And now, here is Carla. Carla, thank you for being here. Well, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be on your show today. Such an honor. And I know you through our Soulful Speaking group. Uh -huh. And it's been a pleasure to getting to know you through that. Perhaps we start with what you do now and then lean into a little bit of your background, your history. It's so rich and interesting. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, I call myself an embodied emotional intelligence healer and coach, but my clients actually call me an emotional alchemist. Um, the truth is I'm much more than that because I actually help people transform completely from the inside out. Whether they're experiencing, a lot of people come to me because they're feeling a little stuck or like something's missing in their life. They're feeling a little bit lost. They might be experiencing anxiety and a lot of them have pain, but usually pain is, you know, pain is either the top on the list or it's the bottom on the list. Like they don't mention it or they, it's the first thing that comes out of their mouth. And what I do is I actually am able to help them. I can identify and release trapped emotions that are causing the anxiety, the pain, um, the, the stuckness that's going on and the feeling of lack of clarity. And I do that through a, a variety of things. I, I've been in the healing arts for over 30 years and I have over 20 different kinds of certifications. So I combine my emotional intelligence and brain profiling and things like Feldenkrais and craniosacral and um, even, even bits and pieces from Rolfing, but in a very gentle way to help people release things. And I can do it over Zoom or I can do it in person. That is wonderful. And share with us perhaps the, the history and what led you into this path. Okay. <laughs> well, that is kind of a long story, but I'll try to make the short version. <laughs> so um, I was working with A-list celebrities in Hollywood. My clients were people like Michael Jackson, George Benson, Bette Midler. Um, I was part of a team and it was the largest PR company in the world. And it was fabulous. I loved it. Fast paced, amazing. And um, eventually I was, my boss, uh, was a great man, but he had, he had a reputation for not being able to keep anybody working with him because he was difficult. I wouldn't say that. I actually found him interesting and I learned a lot from him. He was a great mentor to me and, but he topped out at the agency and he really needed to, um, do something else. Cause he felt like he couldn't never reach the income level that he wanted there. So he left. He started another PR firm with a very famous man named Bob Gibson at the time, very big in the music industry. And um, everybody thought I would get promoted to his position. And when I didn't get it, we were all shocked. I was shocked. Everybody, you know, in the, in the, in the building was shocked pretty much. Um, they gave the job to a, a man who knew, didn't know the clients, didn't have the relationships. He had a reputation for sorting through the trash at night when we were all gone. We, you know, and um, it was, it was a huge blow to me. It, it really impacted me in a way that I, it was the first time in my life where I just felt like um, first that life wasn't fair, you know, that wasn't fair, that how could that happen, you know, um, in such a big way. And then the other piece that hit me was, I think on some level, I decided I wasn't good enough, you know, that I had to, I, you know, I had to do more, be more or something, work harder. So um, they asked me to stay and train him. And I was like, no. <laughs> um, and so um, I started to leave the firm and then another person recruited me to work with, in corporate. So I did that for a while, but I realized I wasn't, you know, somehow it all turned me off a little bit. And, um, and then my old boss called me and he said, you know what, we've got a vice presidency for you here. Come over to our firm. So I did. 
And I worked with them for a while. And then I realized, you know what? I just don't have the same drive for this anymore. I don't have the same love. I, I, that one experience just soured, you know, it per, kind of yeah. permeated everything. I come from corporate. I can understand. Yeah. So uh, anyway, I started looking around for what to do. And I took some, I, uh, people said I was, um, I was a good writer. So I, and I was interested in maybe, I had heard about story development, but I didn't know too much about it. Mm -hmm. And I, um, I took a course in night school and, um, and I also um, got a temporary job with a, a, a production company. Um, it was a woman who had just moved here from New York and she was trying to make her mark. She, she was big in cable television. That was the first time. She was one of the early pioneers in cable TV, made, movies made for cable. And so um, she and I hit it off really well and I became her assistant. And then I ended up growing my empire, so to speak, because she started handing me things to develop, scripts to develop and stories to develop. And I worked closely with another development executive and, uh, and took night school. And then I got uh, offered by my teacher. He read one of my paper and he said, you know, you're so good at this. You, I have a person, I have a guy who he, he's um a new development executive at a, another production company. Would you like to, me to recommend you for the job? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> sign me up. So, um, and for people who don't understand what development is, it's the people who create the stories that you see on television and film. So we might get a, a little piece of an article and develop it into a whole story, or we might get a book and turn that into a script. And part of what I did also was packaging. So I would bring in the producer, I would bring in the director, I would bring in the talent, right? Like a star to make the script, you know, more appealing to somebody. So I went to work for him and, uh, and I was, loved him. We were, we had a great rapport. He was very sarcastic, but at the time that was, that was fun for me. But anyway, he got, they fired him after six or seven months and then expected me to take over his job. Yeah, it sounds like a little bit of a pattern. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. But here they wanted me to take over, but they didn't want to pay me anymore. And they didn't really want to even give me a better title. And I was like, wow, you know, um, I'm making like a quarter of what he was making and you want me to take on his work. So I thought, okay, well, it must mean, you know, between what had happened for me in PR and this, and like, I'm, I obviously I'm not good enough. I have to work harder. So I started putting in more and more time and I would, I never had time off on the weekends. I was always reading scripts. My husband and I would go to socialize with people and they'd be laughing and drinking wine and, you know, doing drugs and whatever. And I'd be over in the corner with my scripts, you know, like reading. And um, so eventually that cost me, uh, I started sleeping. Uh, you know, I had a couch in my, in my office and I would read scripts there and I'd read books and I started little naps. I was started with little naps. My little naps became longer naps and they became longer. naps. And pretty soon I was sleeping like a few hours during the day at my job. I'm like, well, there's something wrong here, you know? So uh, I also noticed I had a fever and uh, couldn't figure out what, what was going on there. Uh, it was very slight, but it was constant. So um, by the time my body just started quitting and I thought, well, you know what, I, I think I have to stop working because my body was telling me that I couldn't anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And I think they were getting ready to fire me, to be honest. I mean, I had, I had some, a very successful streak, but because I was sleeping, they knew I was not, you know, so, uh, by the time I went yeah, to the doctor on some level, you knew that it, it, it didn't feel right. Yeah, it didn't feel right. So. Um, and they did, by the way, eventually give me a raise and they did eventually give me a salary increase, but um, it didn't really, you know, um, it was, it was so far into it and so much resentment had built up, you know what I mean? And, and I'd put out so much effort. Um, and it, again, it was never what he was getting paid and I was doing a lot more work. Um, and that's just the nature of Hollywood, you know, and, and it's changed somewhat, but it's still very, uh, you know, it's a, it's a male dominated industry. Women are never paid exactly the same as men. So uh, anyway, I ended up, by the time I got to a doctor to find out what was wrong with me, um, I had a constant fever. I had an elevated white blood cell count that was off the charts and they couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. They did. I ended up in bed for two years. Your body sending you signals, <laughs> yeah, right? But it's a lot of, yeah. You know, it was, 
uh, my body was talking to me, but I wasn't, you know, at that, up to that point, I wasn't really listening. I didn't really know about, you know, have that awareness. Um, and I started when the doctors finally came back and said, look, you know, we can't help you. I started going to, you know, different kinds of doctors. I had weird injections done, all kinds of things to try to fix it. My mom was frustrated. She came over and tried to help me because I was too weak to do much of anything. And I spent a lot of time sleeping under the tree, reading metaphysical literature at that point, because I was like, that was probably about all I could handle. And I was curious. And then I started doing research on diet and nutrition. And I read, read and read and read, and I learned a whole lot. And I made some changes. Um, but the doctors basically came back to me after two years and said, look, you know, we don't know what's wrong with you. And we're really sorry. Uh, it looks like chronic fatigue syndrome, but uh, we don't really, ha it's not conclusive. And we think you're depressed. So go home, take these antidepressants and, you know, go sleep. Basically. Yeah, more sleeping. <laughs> Yeah, I was already sleeping and uh, yeah, I wasn't too happy with that. I was like, I, I remember thinking in my mind, like any more sleeping and, you know, I could give Sleeping Beauty a run for her money. <laughs> so and that's one of the things about the Western culture that I've been good about intuitively pushing back on, but it's like an instant band-aid or fix is cut them open or give them a pill. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And you know, this whole thing up until that time, I had so much faith in doctors because that's what my parents raised me to believe, right? And, and immunizations and all this other stuff. But that was a life-changing event because ultimately when I, after I did take one antidepressant and I got so depressed from the antidepressant, I actually collapsed on the, on the toilet. I remember just crying because I felt so weak and helpless and like there was absolutely no hope for me. If the doctors couldn't figure it out, you know, whatever. And but some part of me, I think, was more resilient than that. And it wasn't, wasn't necessarily that conscious. But another part of me believed that I could somehow fix this. Overcome, yeah. So um, I, I kept searching for answers. And uh, eventually, you know, again, after two years, I, my neighbor was going to a meditation lecture, a transcendental meditation. And uh, she mentioned it to me. And I invited myself to go with her. It was free. I thought, you know, whatever. It's meditation. So, um, but I had an incredibly profound experience uh, when he sang the lineage of the gurus that it had come down from. And I, up until that time, I'd had no exposure to any of this, but I knew, I knew the words, which was really right. I, not so that I could recite them, but I knew them in here. Yeah. And uh, that was the beginning of, you know, a lot started to crack open. Like I, I, I ended up taking, you know, getting completely going through transcendental medication, meditation, medication, that's funny, um, completely learning the technique and embodying it. I have not stopped meditating. That was 40 something years ago. I meditate every day. I still take those practices, but a turning point for me was when the med meditators uh, needed a place to meditate and we offered our home. And um, I, this old woman, she was white haired and she had these beautiful crystal blue eyes that kind of see into your soul and she stepped onto my threshold and I opened the door and she looked me in the eye and she said this is the home of a very powerful healer and I went oh in my head oh that's nice here go sit down on the couch. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because I didn't know I couldn't even process what she was saying to me you know I had no context and I thought, well, you know, there's always the possibility she's a complete whack job. Well, she wasn't. I mean, she was actually amazing. And she, she really did tune into something inside me that I didn't know about. So shortly thereafter, actually within a week of that, um, now I will say also with the meditation, I was starting to have dreams, lucid dreams of Babaji coming in and teaching me things. And I, I didn't know who Babaji was at the time. And I had to ended up doing research but I did find him, read his, you know, his book. I can't think of the name of it right now. Autobiography of a Yogi, which is amazing. amazing. Oh my God. Yeah. Amazing. And so, um, so Bob, Babaji came to me. I was having these lucid dreams. He would tell me things and I would wake up and I would remember everything that he said. Mm -hmm. And I, again, didn't know who he was. So this was all happening all simultaneously. And then within um, a week of that experience with the, with the meditators, um, I heard about a psychic fair and I thought, well, you know, I, I was doing a, a little bit better with my energy that day. 
So I thought, oh, I can go to a fair. You know, it's like, you know, I can always sit in a chair, right? So I went to the fair and there was a woman, um, she was like doing tarot cards, right? And I had no, didn't have much exposure to tarot either. And um, I decided, you know, it wasn't that much money. I'll, I'll let her read me. Maybe I'll learn something. So when she laid out the cards, she was very, by the way, very solemn, very like stick-like kind of behavior, very just not emotional, right? And, um, and I'm a pretty, you know, emotional person energized. And she was like the complete opposite, right? So uh, she turned the cards over and she said, oh, wow, you've been sick for a real, you've been really sick for a long time. And I was like, oh my God, how does she know that? And then she started to say, well, you know, and she said some other things and she said, you know, what could help you is something uh, it's called energy balancing. And I thought, I said, well, what is that? She goes, you know what? I can't really explain it, but um, it, it's, uh, you know, she told me the price of the session and she said, you know, if you decide to do it, um, you know, call, call me. Well, that I didn't really have the money for it, but that night somebody gave me a check for the exact amount that her sessions cost. Wow. Hello. <laughs> so I went to her for my, my first experience of healing. And, uh, after a couple minutes on her, you know, I went, it was like, you know, incense and crystals and, you know, so you had the smell and you had the candles lit and, you know, it was just this beautiful vibration when you came into the room and she said, you know, lay down on my massage table. And I said, okay. So I laid down and, and she puts her hands over me and she says, she goes, get up. <laughs> So I got up off the table and I thought, well, did I do something wrong? And she goes, you know, no, your problem is you're a very powerful healer and you don't know how to control your energy and you're really psychic. And, you know, I'm going to, you're going to become my apprentice. So you're going to work on, you're going to pay me. You're going to work on me. I never let anybody work on me and you're going to learn, you know, how to, how to do healing work. You're going to start. So, so uh, that's how I started, you know, and <laughs> amazing what an amazing story and it sounds like there's elements of attraction like law of attraction playing as an undercurrent oh for sure for sure i mean it was like a a, a stream of people just being being pulled in you know mm -hmm. definitely and and i think about that because there was you know i think about the meditation teacher he just happened to have flown in from um iowa you know uh, to do this right and that i happened to be conscious enough to go, oh yeah, I should do this. You know, the, uh, the, the healing woman after that, there was the, my teacher who became my psychic teacher because she was amazing, clairvoyant, very famous in the, in the Valley at the time. Then after around that same time was a, a native American teacher who also just magically showed up in my, so, you know, when you're on your, in your groove and you're going, you're listening to the universe and you're not, you know, we get, as human beings, we get stuck between there's the doingness and the beingness, right? Oh, yeah. And sometimes we don't know when to stop doing and just to be. I have this inner dialogue about that all the time. <laughs> it's, 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 it's like this it's constant tug of war. Like on one hand, you want to be an active, do your dharma uh -huh. and get things done. But the other side, you're like, well, let my intuition guide me mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah well it's i now i have a term for that and i actually got this from one of my teachers who he's passed on by you know but i call it high and low potential so it's the difference but you know some people would call it characterize it as masculine and feminine right the the masculine is the doing this right we have to do 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 so and the, but there has to be a time when you sit back and receive right? You have to go, you know, and that's the, you know, like, like if you even think about it, prayer is talking to God, right? That's high potential. Meditation is listening to God, right? So we need to know when we're talking about law of attraction, we need to know when to switch from that, the high to the low, because if we don't, if we're always in high, you can't receive. It's, it doesn't work. And the way I see it, it's, it's, matching to the vibrational level of the energy to open yourself up for that information or energy. Yeah. It, it's, there's also that there is the energetic match. Like one of the things when I'm working with clients 
as, and myself, by the way, <laughs> I'm my, my own best client, um, you know, but, uh, you know, I should say too, after that health crisis, now I almost never get sick. I mean, I, the, I, I did recently uh, get COVID. Thank you very much. But other than that, you know, it's not, it's not something that happens for me. I don't get headaches. I don't get, you know, all of that is because I've shifted my lifestyle. I've changed. Well, I shifted everything, my diet, my way of thinking, all of those things. And so as I've grown and done that, the things that um, don't, that, the, all of those things were interfering with my ability to attract what I wanted in my life, right? I had to, had to clean it up. You have to clean up. You were talking about vibration and frequency. If your frequency is chaotic and it's doing this, right? And it, you really want to have it doing this. So it's more like a stream, you know, uh, not a staccato, but a, a, a classical, beautiful melody, right? I, I totally understand that. I just, yeah, <laughs> I mean, like I can feel that vibration. Yeah, yeah. Just talking about it, right? For people who are familiar, you'll you'll drop into it because, you know, um, I do a uh, well anyway. So the the the, the thing is, is when we're talking about hitting getting sick or hitting a block in our life or not pulling in the money we want or not pulling in the clients, it all comes down to frequency, and frequency happens because of the thoughts that we have, you know, uh, it's also our food. And it's also, you know, when, you know, like people who the difference between sitting down and being mindful about putting in the food into your mouth versus eating in front of the television and not paying any attention. Um, it's a whole different experience, uh, for physiologically for you, but also emotionally and psychologically. Right. So we want to get all of those pieces aligned so that you can start to have the life that you were meant to have. Because what happens is when you have those, we have between, um, it's anywhere between six and 10,000 thoughts, you know, in a day. It's actually some estimates range even higher. This is based on the National Science Institute's research. So I didn't make it up. So when you have one, one emotion can, uh, and then this is, this is based on Dr. David Hawkins, one emotion can can create 10,000 thoughts, right? So when you heal the trapped emotion that's in there, we start to silence though, because now we're getting, we're getting the root. So the thoughts start to go silent, the mind starts to go silent, and we can drop in more into the receptive mode instead of in the doing mode. So Dr. David Hawkins did a lot of research on the emotions and the, the thoughts. And, um, but the, my work is based on kind of a, a, a philosophically about what he, he was doing, because the idea is, well, I, one of the things that I uncovered with my abilities about healing is that I have the ability to listen with my hands. So I can also listen with my body. I'm a complete clairsentient. So for people who don't know what that is, uh, we can, I can hear things and smell things and see things that other people don't hear, smell, or see. Um, but, but with my hands and with my body, I could literally go in, I could if, if we, I had permission, I could literally go in and become you, right? And I, all I have to do is the intention of that. And I can feel what's going on in your body. When I work with a client during a session, I'm putting my hands on and I'm having a dialogue with the tissue. And what I find is the tissue has thoughts. It also has a specific way of communicating. So by the way that, uh, and it's a, it's a way of learning how to listen that it's not, it's not something... Um, I don't even know how to describe it, but for me, it's like, sur if you think about surfing a wave, um, I'm going, um, with, with the least possible pressure into, uh, on the tissue, I'm barely touching, but it can feel like I'm literally inside you moving your kidneys around or, or whatever, depending upon what's going on. And when we do that, I'm addressing the unresolved, um, uh, thoughts and emotions that have been stuck in there for God knows how many years. Right. And you can do and, this over Zoom also or Yeah. So Zoom is I do a little bit different work. So but it's the same, it's the same philosophy. I'm still working on, okay, let's figure out what's the trapped emotion, you know, that's going on with you. Or maybe several usually with most people, there's more than obviously there's a lot in there. Um, so I will target whatever that, you know, that first intention is. But typically I will work with somebody over a period of six months because what happens is as soon as you start to uncover what's possible, you want more. 
<laughs> and you start seeing all the other places where you've been blocking yourself in your life and go, wait a minute, why am I doing that? You know? Um, and, and, and the reason that you don't know is first of all, you don't know that you don't, what you don't know, right? Most people don't realize they're blocking themselves. They may think, oh, it sense a bit of an energetic block or something, right? But it's very different when um, you start to become more conscious of, oh, wow, I, I could ask for this. You know what I mean? I, we don't have to settle for where we're at. So going back to the law of attraction, here we go again, you know, the only thing that's keeping us from manifesting what we want out there is ourself. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. our, I, if you believe in grace, which I do, and I believe that grace is flowing to us all the time. The problem is we are not the best receivers, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and, and the thing that keeps us separate from our divinity is the same thing that keeps us separate from the things that we want in the world because it really is about our, our emotions and our thoughts and our, and our deep-seated beliefs that are all creating uh, vibrations of their own. So one of the things I like to do is help people become more coherent in terms of their vibration mm -hmm. so that the expression of who they are and what their message is actually can fully express itself in the way that it was intended. Yeah, the, the word coherence really resonates with me. I do qigong in the morning and i know that at the very end there's a phrase that i use of um, achieving a state of coherence from the the mind the heart and um, the power center and mm. alignment yeah that's great and and that that is so imagine that coherency not just that's that's a good place to start the challenge is that most people can't they don't know how to make their tissue coherent with everything else, right? Or the complete vibration, you know? And the other thing is, is, you know, again, I'm working on so many different levels with people, but, you know, we have, we have these fields, right? We have our mental fields and our emotional field. And we have all these different bodies out here. <laughs> we don't even, we don't even recognize that we have necessarily. Yeah. Everybody's had the experience of having chills or that feeling of maybe, you know, they sometimes people would say, oh, somebody walked on my grave, you know, where they get, you know, that, that is not that it is a, it is, it is one of your bodies trying to talk to you. Right. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, going back to my illness and all of that, that happened way back when at the time, I didn't understand that our body is, is, um, it is many things. It's not just a carrier for our organs or a, an expression of our, our, our soul on, at this point stage in our growth it's a communication device so it's constantly giving and receiving communication all the time and i was receiving and receiving and receiving and i didn't realize the impact of all that receiving because i didn't have a way to sort through it now i know how to listen to my body so i can tell you know when something's a little bit off i don't have to wait till i get sick i can go oh there's a there's something's going on here steps so that i don't go there you know yeah, was wonderful. And so the different energetic bodies, when you were just saying that, I started feeling chills. Ah, yeah, yeah. Really it's cool. Just confirming it. So that's cool that you felt that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's interesting because I'm aware, but I don't think like the general population is even aware that beyond the physical body, there are other layers around us. It's true. I don't think people are because, and, 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 and again, there's certain personality types that, um, you know, they're more, you know, I do these brain profiles on people, right? And um, so, you know, there are certain brain types, brain styles, I'll call it, where they will never be open to being able to feel that. I mean, it's not part of their nature. I mean, if they had a health crisis or if they had a life-changing event that kind of smacked them, then maybe we could help open them up. But for me, from an energetic standpoint, when I'm doing my work, their body, their tissue will feel so, I, I can tell over the phone that they're not necessarily, they're not a match for me as a client, but, but even more so if I get to the point where I got to work on them. And I've, I've had a couple here where they insisted on coming for a session, even though I said to them, I'm not sure I'm the best person for you. Um, the tissue was so dense that um, it was like working on a body that was made of cement what 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 the tissue should feel like and i hate to use the word should but 
ideally on, on a healthy person, um, there's a, there's a level of movement and communication just in the, in the, you know, in whatever layer I'm on and the tissue will take me, it'll take me to the right or the left or deeper or, or, or so, but it's all telling me that's all information. It might be saying, well, I'm, I don't want to make a decision about that right now, but I'll consider what you're saying to me. And I'm, I'm giving it a suggestion, like, how, what, what would it be like if you moved over here, you know, <laughs> just to help it start to think. But the more we do that, the more these other bodies that we were talking about start to get in alignment. Again, here we go with the coherency of the frequencies. They start to get in alignment with what's going on in here. That is wonderful. Yeah. And we're all energetic beings. I'm constantly reminding myself of that. It's easy to forget, even if you are like what I consider more of a spiritual individual. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So Carla, could you share a little bit about, let's say there are women, particularly women that are challenged with say, not just the um, work-life balance, but how that then manifests in the body how would you approach them and what service do you provide that they could then come to you for? Ah, well, that's a great question. So yeah, balance is really important and most people don't recognize it until they have a crisis. You know, that's, that's the truth. They, and um, you know, you almost in let, you know, if you're feeling high levels of anxiety or you're feeling like unfulfilled, like there's supposed to, you're supposed to have this other bigger purpose here and you're, you're kind of feeling like you know there's something there, but you can't touch it. You know, lots, lots of times you'll experience um, symptoms in your body. It could be headaches. It could be pain. It could be menstrual cramps, right? Um, it could be what you know, people call a change of life, right? Um, but you don't have to go through the suffering like people think they have to go through it. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if I'm making any sense there. But, you know, it, there, in other words, just because you're more advanced in age, it doesn't mean you're supposed to suffer with pain or back problems. Or it's, it's, not, a, it's not about you getting older. It's about your mindset. It's about what emotions and, and, and are trapped in there that have, have not been released in your body. That's what's causing the discomfort. So yeah, when, we're in such a society where numbers are so critical and we yeah. stay in this cerebral, this mind, yeah. where the age and other numbers are like heavily influencing people's perception of their potential. Like yeah. What you're talking about is really energetically, we're energetic beings. And if you can identify the blocks like you do, mm-hmm. you can heal. Yeah. And you have to, you have to be willing to go from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset. I mean, that's the bottom line, because if you, especially if you're wanting to manifest the life that really fulfills you, you you know, there's going to have to be some steps there where you walk forward. You know, I I always think of the, I don't know if you know the tarot, but there's this one card that's called the fool. And it's, the picture is the guy, he's, he's got a, like a vagabond pack over his shoulder, you know, with his, all of his belongings and he's stepping off a cliff in, you know, he's stepping off a cliff. There's nothing on the other side of the cliff that he can see. But we have to take that mindset of the fool in order to progress. Because the minute we think we know everything, you know, we're not, we're stuck. You're already stuck. If you're not moving forward and you're not getting things done, you're stuck. You're, if you're procrastinating a lot, you're stuck. So all of those things, um, you know, when I work with clients, we can, we can move that. Um, what I have, um, so I should tell people a little bit about what I'm offering or if you'd like, just give us a brief description. Okay. So, well, like I said, I, I help people transform from the inside out and it's like a human overhaul so they can get clear on their path and in the process, release any pain or anxiety they're experiencing. Uh, and they'll also start to, you know, I've had people who can't, I'll tell you in a minute about a story. I mean, uh, that's, those are always the best way to go, but you know, I'm certified, like I said, in over 20 modalities, like emotion, uh, code, peace process, cranial sacral, sports medicine, you name it. I probably have a certification in it. And I use all of those tools to support my clients, um, complete transformation. And I think about, um, I always like the story of John. I primarily work with women. But uh, right now what's coming to mind is John's story because it's just such a, it's such a drastic story. John came to me because he had lost, he had had, he had constant pain in his right arm. He lost his job. He was a nervous, you know, he was stressed out all the time. 
and he had a tremendous amount of pain and he actually had stopped playing his guitar because of it. And there were some other things going on with him. And I worked with him from a nutritional standpoint, but I also did a lot of body work on him and I did some of the emotional work as well. And what happened is we, he was, when I met him, he was on 20 medications, 20. Imagine, I can't even think that. <laughs> so uh, he, by the time I got done with him, he was off all of his medications. Oh, by the way, he also had, his wife divorced him because he was such a miserable, you know, he was in pain and he was not a very nice person. But after working with him, he uh, was able to start a new relationship. He's now married that woman. He has a new job. And again, you know, he's off all of the medication. So anything is possible. I, ne I never can guarantee, but I'm going to use the same power of intention and integrity that I use with him with everybody, right? To do as much as I can. So anyway, I can, I can do things like that. I, I helped another woman who was uh, scheduled for surgery for her shoulder and her hip. She came to me with a, a lot of pain and we were, Helena, she's amazing. And she also was not able to get a job. And, uh, but after I worked with her, she, uh, did not, her, her shoulder pain went away her hip pain went away. So she didn't go for the surgeries. She attracted an amazing job where she was, she's been very busy. I can't, we don't hardly ever get to talk anymore. And it was, a, it was about quadruple what her income had been before when she was employed. So those are the kind of things I'm capable of doing. So for women who are, you know, sorry, go ahead. You and you were me? saying, yeah. So it's just not just about the healing, but it's also, you're helping them through intention attract the, he the healing as well as other areas of their lives. Yeah, it's, it, it radiates, you know, you can't, it's like if you think of, um, I like to use the analogy of the body as a tide pool, you know, and you know how when there's a rock and then like uh, some piece, like a scallop will attach to the rock and on top of that, there's some seaweed and then maybe some muscle grabs onto the seaweed. You know, that's kind of what happens in our body. Like if you think about we're the rock, right? And we got all this stuff that starts attaching, attaching, attaching. And all of those little attachments are making a huge difference in our vibration and what we're able to attract, right? And also our physical comfort, right? And what we're able to do. So, but anyway, for people who, you know, are interested, um, I am offering a very amazing special and I'm offering a session that uh, it's normally, well, uh, just one piece alone is worth $600. So I'll just get into this in a second. So if you want to get really clear on your pain and clear up your anxiety and confusion uh, about where you are in your life, um, it's, an, it's, it's an emotional alchemy session. The session comes with one um, subconscious pattern trapped emotion, which I will at least release one, probably more than one. I'm offering a brain talent profile. Those alone are worth $600 where I looked through your brain talents and see what's natural and what you're not using. And then also I, I'm offering an essential oil recommendation so I can help you anchor the new information in your neural pathways. And so that's good. So for anybody who uh, is interested in that, uh, the session, um, like the, um, the session just for the emotion alone is worth about $400. Uh, like I said, it's about 600 for the brain talent. Um, and the oil cons consultation is actually priceless. Um, and I'm offering all of that for $79, which is an amazing deal for your listeners. Um, if anybody's interested uh, in, in having those sessions with me, you just go to emotionalalchemywithcarla.com and Carla with, is with a C. And you can sign up there and book your session. So any parting wisdoms for perhaps the one thing you would want your client, potential client to think about when it comes to attraction, law of attraction? Yeah, I think I would just say that you are a magnificent human being with incredible power that you haven't fully realized. I can, I, there's no doubt in my mind. And is it worth it to take a chance, try something you haven't tried, and move into that growth place so that you can start to attract the life that you're actually looking for. Lovely. Well, thank you, Carla. Hopefully we can have you back again as a guest. Um, I know me. women would really appreciate your wisdom as well as your compassion. Uh, thank you so much for having me. It's an honor, Shilpa. It's been an honor for me as well. Thanks again for tuning in. Check out the links in the description and please subscribe follow, and share, and continue to be omnipresent.